All right. So I thought this would be a useful video because I haven't uh, done any good technical ones in a really long time. So this is a Hubble CX uh, commercial lighting control panel. I found that when I installed this panel, it was complicated to program because I didn't quite understand. The uh, manual doesn't give a very good detail explanation on um, how this all incorporates and works together. Um, so it was kind of frustrating. So it was sort of like a, a big learning curve for me. Um, I've done a lot of these control panel lighting uh, panels themselves and it was kind of frustrating uh, to just be frustrated by something that was so simple or should have been so simple. Um, and I actually feel like this one is actually pretty simple now that I understand it. So simplest way to, to go through the whole thing is this ribbon right here is impar is huge and it's super, super important. Um, when you first get this unit, before you start doing any work on this, take this ribbon off right here and then you can just lift the whole door. See, just almost shut it and then lift the door. And the reason I say that is because if the door, it's kind of stupid. It's like a, when you, when you start to do a wiring it, you'll understand. It tries to keep shutting on you. And you can, you can see it right there. It just, it just wants to shut. So just get rid of that ribbon first thing. And, and actually that thing is incredibly important. So be real cautious about that, uh, about messing that ribbon up. And then um, you have your, your relays, that those blue boxes that are right there. These are your relays. So if you have a, a wiring schematic that tells you how to wire it with which relays, um, I would suggest that you stick with that. Uh, one thing to, to note is that they do not give you um, in the manual, they will not tell you this, and this was the one thing that was kind of frustrating for me, is here's the the chart. They'll give you this chart that's inside of the, um, the unit here. And you'll fill this all out so that you can make sure that you get it wired properly. But you see where it says relay and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 24. That is exactly what you're looking at in here. This is relay 2, this is 4, this is 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Same as, the same as this is laid out is how it is here. That's not these little, I don't know if you can see the little numbers that I added. You kind of can. I added little numbers to make it easier to identify when I go to hook up all the low voltage wires. So once you do that, it's pretty simple. Um, and here's a good rundown here too. So you have these devices here, these little spots here. These are all, you can individually program each one of these inputs to be anything else. Just because it's on this same relay board, does not mean that it's associated with relay one. So this could be like switch 17 or switch three or switch one, and it can, re and it can operate relay one, four, seven, nine, 11, 14, it can do whatever. One input can do any relay in this board. It doesn't matter where it's located. I could have chose these ones way down here if I wanted to, but I didn't just because I wanted to just keep all my relay and all my operations at the top. So then it's simple. Then you just have on your relays, you just have line and load. And it doesn't matter which one you do because it's just a contact. It's just going to close or it's going to be open. Open, closed. That's it. So um, if you have, like in this case, I had, I don't even know if you can see that one. Yeah, in this case, I had, uh, I had multiple switch legs. And so, um, and I also had multiple hots because I had some egress lighting outside and I didn't want to run another circuit and have wire nuts up inside the gutter and stuff. And so that's how that is. Um, so your low voltage wiring will stay in the center and all your line voltage will stay on the outside. That's easy. So you just need a line and a load, line load, line load, line load all the way through. And then I also labeled the breakers. You can see like five, 23, 23, 29, um, so on and so forth. So you can, you can, uh, you can label those, makes it easier. You can label your circuit numbers if you want, makes it a little easier. Um, you need one dedicated circuit for this, this panel, which I used, uh, number 27 it says, it's marked here. I would also suggest just taking, oh, let me just twist this and show you. Just taking a moment and kind of like writing some directions for somebody later on down the road. If this is a, this is usually gonna be a commercial project you're gonna do this on, so just give them some directions. Just write something out. 
just write something like I just showed you with this video um, or just share this video with them if you want just to show them kind of how to um, program it and use it because it's not complicated but it's not super easy and the directions suck so um, I'll make sure this video is accessible with all of its part numbers and everything so um, that's the that's the control side easy line and load line and load all your switches um, that gets into that is discussed in the um, the manual so great thing but they don't explain that that statement that I said about all of these being um, there they could all be programmed to do something else Even every single one of them this one this one this one all these every one of them they can all be programmed to be, to be uh, different switches so just keep that in mind when you go to wire it land them land them wherever you want to land them just make sure you do it right <laughs> um, and then on here it'll show on the board it shows 24 control com and LED LED is referring to the LED light that's on the actual button itself not the LED on this board it's on the button out there uh, com is your common control is what you're going to control and 24 is your 24 volt supply that needs to go to the switch so you can see that I used the 20 I used in this case I used control and I used LED but I didn't use com because I already have com at that switch and I already have 24 at that switch I just needed those two I just need to control and I needed to the LED to tell me when it's on that's all, that's all I needed um, so that's the inside wiring pretty simple Simple now that you know how to do it. Everything's simple when you know how to do it. Um, getting into the main display, you're gonna have uh, it's gonna have the time written there. It's gonna tell you the date, 10 21 20. Is that the right date? I don't think that's the right date. Yeah, it is October. Okay, that's good. Um, enter system settings. I'm just gonna go through a couple of these to see. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna you're gonna instantly go into system settings. Go to date, time, preferences, and then you're going to just go through these and set up the date, the time. Um, it's it's pretty simple. This this point is pretty easy, but you want to do that first. So you go through all of that stuff and answer as many of those questions as you feel like they're necessary. And then when you're done, you'll come back to this screen and you'll hit escape. Scenarios. I don't remember if I use this or not. Let's see. I didn't use scenarios. I did use groups and so here's what groups is so groups is like you saw all those relays in there uh, let's show you an example so here I have two relays that say the same breaker 23 and 23 that would be a group whatever that controls circuit 4 and 6 uh, let's look in my main panel here at 4 and 6 4 and 6 are okay so those are a lighting so if I look at the group here so I'm going to group those two together. I might have grouped a bunch of breakers or a bunch of these together. It all depends upon whatever kind of scene they want to create. One button turns on all the lights in this one area or one button turns on all of these things. You just got to figure out whatever the groups are that you want. So what I did, and let's see if you can, let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Make that a little bit better. Just bear with me for a sec. Okay, good. So you can see right there that I have I have gym button one, gym button two, button three, button four. So in this gym, there are four buttons. And when you click each button, I have those groups already created. So if we go into one, like say gym button one. So if someone is out there and they press button one, here's what here's what they're gonna see. You're gonna go into that, you're gonna create it by creating the name, and you gotta it's like the old phones, you know, when you had to press two three times to get a C oh, it's terrible if you're if you're younger than 35 you, you probably don't know what I'm talking about but um, okay so you want to go and, and then here it is perfect so uh, name you add your name relays you can change that I'm using seven relays in this group so with button one when someone presses that out in the gym seven of these relays turn on so that's a perfect example. So then you just go through and you select those seven relays. That's when you start to go back into here and you look and you go, okay, when button one's pressed, I want to turn on uh, relay two, six, 10, 
14 and 23, whatever it is. And then you just go in here and you select it. Select, 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 select. Once you get that, you don't want to do any dimming. Um, you can do dimming with these if you want. I didn't do any dimming. So then you just escape out of that. And then you can just can go to the next one. You create another button. The reason you want to create buttons is because then later on, when you get to, um, let's say like, is it schedules? Oh, that's another one. We'll talk about that in a minute. Actually, groups is, that's the most important part is you just want to make sure you have all your groups set up. For instance, like outdoor, that's a good one. Actually, there's a reason I'm here right now is because I had to adjust the time that that outdoor um, is going on and off because they didn't like that it was still dark outside at seven and I have it set to where it, well, I had it for summer hours. Okay, so. Just going through to see did I set up anything else oh yeah okay so then this is it right here so inputs so then you have to give your inputs a name you got to identify what your inputs are so M I O one input M I O one put in one input um, let's try to ex describe that better here. Perfect. Let's use this card again. Okay. Let's see if my in that in focus here. Uh, right there. So you see how you have inputs at the bottom. Relay board input dis description one three five. It's the same as the relays. So. M I I O is input output M main main input output and then you have auxiliary so you have auxiliaries which I didn't use and then you have outputs which I also didn't use so on there on that screen you can see that I have let's, let's try to move it over just a little bit So I have input, input output one is button one. So then you have to give that, that input a name, button one. And that's where your wiring, I should zoom back out because it's getting hard to see. Actually, it's pretty good. It's right on the one. So that's where this wiring lands on relay. It lands on relay, relay one, and it's button one. So this is the control for button one. And it operates, like I showed you, with all of those different um, groups, like we talked about. So for input one, we select it. You have to select the type of switch, which it's just, it's just momentary. And it's normally open. So you gotta make sure you get the right type of switch. Is it a, is it a momentary? Is it a maintained? is it you would know that based on your pro, your project so just make sure you get the right type of switch in, installed in there um, and then if you can see right there the control it's running go one gym button one input m i m i o one is controlling gym button one and if you remember gym button one is controlling seven relays so that input when the button is pressed out in the gym it comes into here and it goes oh that's right i remember relay one controls seven relays so then all so seven of these will turn on it's pretty easy once you do one of these and you start to wire it and you start to program it it's really it's really not that complicated it's just the directions the directions just really suck so once you've got that saved um, I don't change priorities is something you should we should talk about 
but basically just means if there's another program on top of this one program, if one of them's set to, let's say like high, it'll take priority over the other one. Sounds simple enough, right? Anyway, so you have to go through button one, uh, input two, button two, lighting top, uh, button three, lighting bottom, button four, input eight. Uh, if it says input and then the number, that's just a default. So I don't have anything on those. So I'm only using uh, a few of them here. Like input two is nothing. It's nothing. Button two, I could have just moved that up, but I didn't. Lighting top, button three. So that's it. That's the inputs, the outputs. I don't have any presets. I didn't set that up. Dimming, I don't have, and system tools. It's not necessary to look through. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the CX commercial lighting control panel by Hubble. Uh, not one of the easiest ones I've worked with, but it does work um, and it gets the job done. So if you're looking for a commercial lighting control option, it's a good one. It has the, the low voltage switches, which that's what a lot of people wanted was the option to have multiple switches at one location with one box and not use a single or a two gang box. So anyways, that's it.